So excited, boot camp, making a sailing episode four. Take a little bit. Oh man, I love recording these. These are so much fun. All right, here we go. Hey guys, what up? It's your boy Aaron coming at you with a fresh new reaction video today. We're gonna to be doing Making a Sailor episode four. It's getting insane, you guys. It's getting crazy. We're almost there. We're almost at battle stations, and we're almost there. We're almost sailors. All right. So uh, let's let's check this one out. Uh, this one's gonna be a fun one, you guys. Let's have fun. Let's go, kiddo! All right, so this is known as Reveille. This is when your RDCs are gonna come in. You guys are gonna start the routine. Normally in the morning, one of the first things you're gonna do is you're gonna have so much time to make your rack, uh, shave, brush your teeth, and whatnot, and then clean the compartment before you go to morning chow. Now, you guys will be smart. You guys will figure out a way to operate within the time that you're given because you're only given like 30 minutes to do this or so, not even. Uh, so you kind of find a way to make time work for you in essence. So what I mean by that is you can only have so many people outside of your racks at, at taps, which is at night when it's basically taps as lights out. Um, so what you do is I think the rule is five people. So people will be up all night ironing their stuff. You basically like take turns. You can do all sorts of stuff. Get a little list going. Uh, here I am on the list. Uh, when I'm done with my ironing or whatever, I'm going to go wake up this person. Here's this person and here's his rack number. And then I'll go and find him. Hey, man, it's your turn. And then I'll go to bed, cross out my name. So the same thing will kind of go along the lines with shaving. So we started doing shaving at like 2.30 or 3 in the morning. So we'll have five people just go and shave. That's it. You go like in your section leaders are going to be the ones that kind of like coordinate that. So you guys will figure out your own little way of doing it. We were kind of ingenious because we had a bunch of freaking nukes in the division, but you guys will find your way. I wake up 15 minutes. That's what it was. I I, I didn't want to say it was 15 minutes because it didn't seem like a whole lot, but yeah, you get 15 minutes to make your rack. Every morning, I'm, and I'm like, I'm really in Navy boot camp. Good morning. Uh, 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 <laughs> doesn't feel like I'll pause it so you guys can do a heel. So there you go. So it's gonna teach you how to do your salute. Uh, yeah, all your little general information. Attention on deck. That's for officers. Like I was saying in the last video, and then they'll put your division number, and then you can kind of see the wrapping right here. This is gonna be your chain of command. So it'll show you like your collar devices, chest devices, all that good stuff. Uh, sleeve the dress blues like it'll it'll contain everything so the answers are right there in front of you so no one's stopping you and you can kind of see he's kind of doing it now that the chief is redirecting him to do it but sometimes I had to do it too don't don't be afraid to just sit there and uh and then kind of just like eyeball it and just say good morning chief and that's gonna go along with that good morning chief All right so that's the title good morning chief Seaman Recruit, Pereira, Division 427, whatever. Uh, Roving Security Watch or Security Watch. They kind of updated this. They made it look a little bit better and not so jacked up. You don't say Night Security. You just say Roving Security Watch or Security Watch. The new one says Security Watch or Roving Security Watch because this guy is the Security Watch, more than likely. Um, standing by for further instructions, Chief, because you always do the sandwich. So that's basically that. Ah, uh, I'm not sure what ship they're in. Ah, uh, 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 It doesn't feel like we're here. And it's like you go to sleep and you wake up and, and then you look around yeah, and you're, you're like, here. oh crap. You shave yet? Yes, Petty Officer. When? Like last again. night, Petty Officer. Did you shave this morning? No, Petty Officer. Or within the last hour? No, Petty Officer. Go shave. All right, Petty Officer. Now we're in our permanent ship. And it's a heightened amount of stress because there are so many more pairs of eyes looking at us. Hurry up. Uh, it's stressful at the moment. I'm trying to get um, used to it, I guess. I believe with Division 229 when we first switched from P days where we were coaching most of the time to week one where we were holding them accountable, it scared a few of them that they weren't going to be able to meet the standard that we expect them to hold. Everybody on your faces, now! You can't hack in the water! You ready to quit? You want to quit? I can get you out! I know some of you might ask. 
aren't going to be able to meet the standard that we expect them to hold. Everybody on your faces. Now. You can't act in the Okay, so you can kind of see it. It's right here. You ready to quit? He has his little, he has his little blue tags. The ones that I've seen are red. That's usually uh, like the sickle cell trait. So people that go to Freedom Hall, they're going to be given like this little... Uh... You guys ever played like the... What is it? Like the... Not tag football, but you put in a little belt and it has a little tapes and you try to like rip the little thing. You're going to wear like those little belts that have like a little red band or whatever. And that's going to identify like who are the sickle cell people so they can keep an eye on you to make sure you're like hydrated and taken care of. So it's kind of like what those are. I, I just haven't seen the blue ones. The ones that I saw were red. So they have like some type of sickle cell trait and that's just an identifier. Do you want to quit? I can get you out of here. One, two, three, four. All recruits, when you first pick them up from basically civilians and then get them into the week one training and you start using intensive training exercises on them, they really struggle. It's mostly a mindset. When someone's in your face yelling at you, they'll have a hard time doing 10, 15 push ups and they kind of start to quit on themselves before they need to. All right, so this person is your security watch right here. This person and then this person back here, these guys more than likely, that's the blue thing that you put over your pillow to not get blood on it, just in case. I had one. I never got blood on my pillow. It wasn't that bad. I was I was so bored. I and this, these people are from dental, by the way. Um They gave me like six hundred milligram ibuprofen or something crazy and like I, I didn't even need them. Like I was, I was just so bored in my bed. I was just, I wanted to get up and clean. I wanted to do something. The RDCs wouldn't let me. I was just like, I'll, I'll just sit here. And you can, like, it's nice, but, like, for me, it was boring. So I wanted to train. I wanted to do stuff. It just sucks sitting in my bed constantly. But, yeah. You're quit. You're not sweating. You're not putting any effort into it. You're just quitting. Yeah. Fun fact. So every way, I'm just throwing this in there because I love helping you guys out. So this board right here teaches you exactly what uh, what's called recruit handwriting. So uh, in the military world, um, there's no such thing as like a, a tabletop J. Uh, every letter is capitalized. Zeros, you put a slash through. It teaches you like military handwriting, and you have to log everything. It's an official document, so they can actually pull that. They can actually pull that for court and things like that. So everything's got to be done like to the T. Uh, where is it at? Can't really see it right here. There's like the mailbox. And on top of that mailbox is a blue binder that teaches you how to log everything on top of it. Like what to write specifically for a specific entry. Like uh, commenced RDC training time, secured from RDC training time, things like that. Divisional ITE conducted uh, for division, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they announced that in the entire ship whenever like a divisions are getting like murdered essentially. Uh, but yeah, so this teaches you how to write everything in the handbook, or the, the log book rather. And then this is the, you can't see it because he's blocking it. So just use your imagination. There's a little blue binder that tells you exactly what to log for when. Effort into it, you just quit it. Code. Yes, sir. Get over here. What side of the open side of your pillow go to? The open side of the right, the officer. So why is your pillow backwards? Uh, Fix it! It's the same hit every day. All right, so this guy's fooling around with his backpack. So obviously, the kid that's getting yelled at right here about his pillow or whatever, this kid is his rack mate. So if you're ever with someone that can't get it together, like basically me, like I could never get it together, you guys are there to help each other out. So make sure you're on top of them. Hey, man, did... You got yelled at for your pillow yesterday. Just make sure I'm not trying to like get on you, but like just make sure because they're going to be looking for that because you screwed it up like the last two days. So just trying to help you out that way you don't get yelled at or whatever. So look after each other, take care of each other. Hey, you both had that hit yesterday. Only okay. one of you fixed it. Why didn't you look at it? Okay, basically like what I was just saying. Never mind. And apparently he got the hit too, but he corrected it. He didn't. They should have buddy chucked. They should have buddy checked each other. Can't see it, Petty Officer. Once he makes his rack, look at it for him. I it's called that. teamwork. Figure it out. I That's been the most challenging part, is just getting Yo, getting along with each other. This is some real stuff. Like my division, we all hated each other. <laughs> 
getting along with everyone and trying to work together Yo. and putting all differences aside and so understanding right that we have one goal to accomplish. So some people have adjusted to that better Four, than others. Five, six, seven. All right, those are called 10 counts. Y'all are going to get real familiar with those. Those are freaking horrible. I'll do a video on uh, how to prepare yourself to uh, have an easier go at being IT. Uh, I'll give you guys some workouts that will help you guys out. That way you're used to getting yellow carded and it won't hit you as bad. So I'll do something for you guys in a video coming up. Eight, nine, ten. Up, down, up. Ten. Up, down, up. Thirty-one. Up, down, up. Thirty-two. Up, down, up. Thirty-three. So that IT session was to show them after taps they're not allowed to argue with each other. And they have to just handle things internally as a as a division. What number? Then yell it! 12! 12! Do it! Do it! That's not yelling! Yell 12! 12, Daniel! 12, Daniel, I said. No one feels sorry for you! So, like... I don't want to say this is for cameras. Every RDC is different. I'm going to just tell you guys my experience. So, like, from my experience... Like, unless you like royally jack up, like I don't, I don't know what she did, but unless you like violate UCMJ like back to back, like break the law. That was the only time I saw something like this. But like this, this doesn't even like touch some of the things that I saw. But it's like, um, it, it's more of like whenever I got yelled at by my third RDC, he was more of like in my face and like normally like this is what screwed me up so whenever i got yelled at i would always go to attention it was just my thing so i always go to attention and i would just sit there and just take it and but he he always wanted me to look him in the eyes and he's like it's a sign of disrespect when you don't look someone in their eyes and all that and I'm, I'm just thinking to myself and i'm like we're supposed to like i'm gonna do what you tell me to do obviously but i'm like it's not like military bearing just every every rdc is different so like whenever i got yelled at it wasn't mainly like getting yelled at it was like it was more personal like I guess to like drive the point through to your like head so every RDC is different so that doesn't mean you're gonna get this like every day in boot camp Calvin, no one you want to be a part of this you want to act like them hey, you're gonna pay for it just the like card. they do it's but they can't now. bring every situation to the RDCs and also they can't argue with each other like they're still in high school and need to realize that they're grown women and across the hall of men and they need to handle amongst one another one recruit knocking on my door. This card is orange. It must have been an older version of the card. This this was an older video. Okay, never mind. Look, there's your security watch. This person trying to sleep. <laughs> this is a typical boot camp. I love it. Telling me, see me recruit so and so. Get this. Handle it amongst yourselves. We're trying what to hold the parkas. You understand. <laughs> when you come to boot camp, it's not just about me as an individual, it's about us as a team. They're not sure who's going to step up and take leadership positions, who's going to help support those leaders. So it's just a forming stage at the very beginning of boot camp where they learn how to come together and work together. So 1400, head on spot, same time entry, forward hold on spot. He's telling them how to log stuff. That's that's what that is. Four hold on spot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So 1400, head on spot, same time entry, forward hold on. So same time entry. So you're going to have like lines, right? So you're going to do 1400, head on spot, period, end of entry, write down the time, whatever your signature, however they do it. And then same time entry, you're going to take a ruler and it's got to be like perfect. You got to do like a diagonal line on the time where, the, where the, you would put the time entry at. And then that signifies this, is a, this happened at the same time. And then you just make the other entry. Spot. You understand? I'm kind of learning leadership. There's a channel for man in our in our division. I am a head. Uh, I'm a head PO. Just I clean the head. I clean the bathrooms. I actually enjoy doing it. I actually like to keep it clean. And what I don't enjoy is people not listening to <laughs> do what I tell. So hey, so head PO, you're more than likely. Uh, it, it's such it's such a thankless job. But head PO, like, don't let people walk all over you, because I've seen it. And I kept telling her head PO, I'm like, hey, man, you freaking lock it down. People want to go in after you and just destroy it, like the entire head and whatnot. 
and then that's just gonna in turn get us messed up with FQA. Then our RDCs are gonna mess us up. I always tell them like, hey man, I'd be like casting, lock it the frick down. Like you can do that as head PO. You can say, you know what? Since y'all wanna keep screwing up the head, the whole aft side of the head is secured, including showers. So now instead of having like twenty something stalls, everybody has like five stalls. You can be smart if you're like a guys division. Don't use the urinals. Only use the stalls. That way, urinals are always clean. Like you, you, you can make the system work for you. And then, yeah, so many sinks you guys can't use. So kind of like it's a way of like punishing your division because they, if they don't want to keep everything like cleaned and work with you, and they don't care, then you can do things like that to make them care and want to work with you instead of against you. Because you're gonna have people that don't care. It happens, but you can do things like that as the head PO, uh, RDCs approving and whatnot. But I don't, I don't see why not. They're putting you in that position. They're saying, "You're in charge of the head. Complete the mission." That's just a tool. You're in charge. Don't be afraid to lock stuff down. Oh, and that's why being a team comes into play. Hey, please. You're in the shower. Yeah. 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 All right, this is going to be a long video because I know a lot of you have been talking about Swim Qual, so I'm going to do a video on this specifically here pretty soon, and I'm going to also just tack in a bunch of information on this and help you guys out. So I'm going to try to make this the most informative part of the video. <laughs> I barely passed the swim. So this is a baseline swim test to just make sure that they have the basic skills required to uh, survive if they were to find themselves in the ocean. So we walk in. And I All right, so one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to do this. You're all going to get, you're, you're all going to sit down first things first, and you're going to learn about the USS Indianapolis and that tragedy and all that. And um, you're going to sit down in these classrooms. Each classroom holds about two divisions. And... Um, you're going to learn about the USS Indianapolis, all sorts of stuff. And uh, you're going to go out here. They're going to give you a bunch of, like, information. Who can't swim? They're going to demonstrate. You're going to see instructors dive off, of, not dive, but jump off of these, whatnot. And uh, they're going to show you all sorts of stuff. Like, they're going to get in coveralls. They're going to have, like, special swim combat instructors, like these crazy people. They're going to jump in a pool with coveralls. And they're going to go like this with, like, their back. I see the platform. What are you doing, boy? <laughs> so you're gonna have you're gonna have the instructors like in the pool. They're gonna be splashing water into their coveralls, but really it's not water. They're putting air bubbles into their coveralls, and they're gonna pull down and lock at their neck. All the air bubbles are gonna be trapped in the coveralls. They're gonna go to the back of the neck, which they can't escape. And then boom, you just made a life jacket for yourself. And all you gotta do is just sit there and hold on. They're gonna teach you all sorts of stuff like water survivability, all sorts of stuff. Kick off your boots. All kinds of stuff. Um, so yeah, well, Five, the first thing you're gonna do is make ten feet is not that bad, and then you get up there and you look down and I'm like, whoa, that's ten. I'm terrified of heights, guys. Uh, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Ten feet. Oh, he says, okay, step. Then I kind of hesitated. And now they're not gonna push you in. What they're gonna do is they're gonna guide you because some people will uh, the last second and try to go back as they're falling. Boom, they're going to knock themselves out. They're going to hit their uh, head on that uh, that ledge. So they're there to basically just do a follow through. It's not a push, but it's to just ensure that you're going to clear that. That way you don't nick your head. Uh, so they're there to keep you safe. Before I knew it, I was over the edge. So once you're done with that, you're going to swim over to your right, basically. And a, trip, a trick for the, uh, the dive, I don't know if they'll show it in this video, but they'll say, look at, no, they're not going to. They're gonna show. They're gonna show the the boat. Okay. Um. You're gonna sit there. You're gonna be ready. Just look at the flag and just step towards the flag. There's gonna be a huge American flag in the back where you first enter. And you're gonna come around, get up on this thing, go to the ledge. Just look at the flag. Don't do what I do, or what I did rather. Look down. I'm already scared of heights. I I don't know why I tortured myself. I already knew that that technique to just stare at the flag and then just just jump forward. I didn't do it. Just I would encourage you guys just look at the flag. It's it's really not that bad. You're only in the air for like maybe a second. Not even. So 
it is what it is. Plus, you're going to do this jump twice, minimum. <laughs> so once I finally got out of the... Okay, yeah, so you're going you're gonna to get in the water, you're going to swim right, and then they're going to they're gonna have already taught you these swim techniques. Um, you can do, like, the seal. You can do the, the regular stroke. There's, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. You can do backstroke, the jump. I, I don't really know the name of them. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I like I know what they are. I can do them, but I don't know, I don't know the, the particular names for them. But you have to do like a 50 yard swim. You're gonna have instructors there basically walking with you. The the hardest part for me was like I couldn't see where I was swimming, so I like I'd have to like yell at me, and I'm like, well I, I can't see, so <laughs> and I just keep swimming. I was already doing spec work training. I was off by like a minute, so I was already like a really strong swimmer as it was. Um, but yeah, swim's not that bad. And they're gonna be like, all right, who here can't swim? I don't know if they're going to show this, but there's like, there's like a, a kiddie pool essentially right next to it. Okay, perfect. There you go. There's your little kiddie pool. Um, so the next area that you're going to be jumping off the second thing to go into the, like the little flotation area or whatever that's like in the pool, the little ship or the abandoned ship scenario. That's what it is. The abandoned ship scenario. That's all. There's a doorway right here. And it's like all decorated with uh, fallen spec war heroes in the Navy. Um, so they're going to pull you if you can't swim, which is quite a few of you. And you're just going to do swim lessons. You guys have pretty much all of boot camp to pass the swim. So do not stress it. We had a person pass literally four days before graduation. You guys have time. You have the best instructors in the world. They're going to teach you how to swim. You'll go kill it. You'll be fine. I finally got out of the pool and made my swim. I was like, okay, great. The worst part is over. And then we go to the other side and we have to jump off. My swim, I'll say, okay, great. The worst part is over. And then we go to the They must have changed it. Uh, over here is like nothing but like pictures and pictures and pictures of fallen special warfare heroes. The other side, we have to jump off again. And I was like, man, why didn't they tell us this before we joined? I would have reconsidered that. This is pretty self explanatory. But I passed. You'll, you'll connect, y'all will muster in the water, and then one person will get in, one person will assist. And then, like, I was responsible for giving the orders out, like directing everybody what to do as soon as they made it into the, the life raft. Um, but he did inform me that I needed to take swim lessons. It doesn't look as high as it is, and it's not the fact that um, you like, I'm afraid of heights, but it's the feeling, yeah, it's the feeling your stomach gets when you drop. You have to hold on. It's incredible. That, that was the hardest thing was getting in that raft. Like, for real. And you guys will have instructors, like, if you're still not that strong of a swimmer, because you have to pass all this you're gonna have plenty of instructors in the water with you guys and all over. So you guys are good. They're not gonna let anything happen to you. Like even earlier, you saw somebody got pulled out of the water because they weren't doing too well. I don't know where it's at, but they handed him like an oar. He grabbed onto the oar, which was like a blue one. That's not it actually, but whatever. They handed him a blue oar and pulled him out of the water because he was having difficulty. But they're not gonna let anything happen to you guys. You guys are in great hands. Well, everybody has to get in it one by one and the water was really cold. Oh, but wow. it was quick, it was fast, and uh, I really enjoyed jumping off the tower. Yeah, that was not fun. I, mean, I did not enjoy that. Other people said that they loved it. I mean, I hope I don't go overboard. So much fun. So much, so much fun. We started off with 79 recruits, and going through the first couple days, you lose a lot of recruits for medical reasons, for uh, testing reasons and a lot of times those recruits get processed back into training <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um yeah this is true like you're gonna lose people like we didn't lose anybody at uh, moment of truth we lost one at the peanut butter shot honestly um so what happens if you like refuse peanut butter shot in certain parts of training they're going to take you somewhere, you're going to receive like a counseling, and they're going to give you like a second opportunity, you refuse again, they just send you home. Like they don't even, they don't waste no time on you. There's this one kid in my division that he went into the, I was actually in there with him. It was the scariest thing. Um, we all were like right there. And he's like leaning forward and this kid's like, for what? He's like, we're going <laughs> to, and he's like, no. He's like, what you just say to me? He's talking to the corpsman. And he's like, face the table, lean forward at the waist, and expose left buttocks. And he's like, no. 
He's like, are you refusing the peanut butter shot at this time? Kid goes, yeah. He goes, I'm going to ask you this one last time. Are you refusing the peanut butter shot at this time? And the kid goes, yeah, you're not giving it to me. He goes, very well. I swear to you, this Corman, like, I don't remember specifically, but like, this is what I saw. This dude snapped his fingers. This curtain flew open and these two huge freaking dudes came out of nowhere and they yoked this kid up. And he was a tall kid. His feet were dangling and they just walked him out of the room. Never saw him again. Like, I was like, <laughs> on the table, like, give it, let's go. Yo, like, they don't waste no time. Like, it, it was it was scary. I was like, yo, this kid, that is funny. You'll be like, you'll be so bored. You can't leave, you can't leave your rack other than to go to the bathroom seal. Any interaction with anybody else you can get, you can kind of, like, you'll just take. So they'll continue so on funny. with another division. But yeah. But he's talking about a setback. There's some people that get sent home, people get set back. All sorts of stuff can happen. You can get as mode, which is like, don't even get me started on as mode. Boot camp's very challenging. We push the recruits to their limit and beyond what they think their limit is. Because when they're here at boot camp, if we can push them and push them and make them feel uncomfortable, but they You guys are gonna get like in line with the routine and that's gonna be like a lot of boot camp. You already see the recruit just being in the office, just hanging out, doing whatever. Like, I don't know what she's doing. She's probably on Facebook. They're they're probably just waiting because there's everything is done by a specific schedule and you guys learn the schedule look you have all your siq people you have uh, like appointments i guess all, all sorts of stuff so you guys are going to have like all sorts of stuff going on so everything is done to the t and your hallway right here like on the right side of the door depending on the compartment you're going to have like your schedule for the day and it, it goes by it's down to like to the minute so everything is done by a specific time to their limit and beyond what they think their limit is because when they're here at boot camp if we can push them and push them and make them feel uncomfortable but they keep succeeding and keep going through the mission then those are going to be the sailors that are out there in the fleet ready to serve once they do graduate here and if they find out that boot camp's not for them it's better for us to filter out the people that are going to have an issue under pressure while they're here at boot camp before they get out there in the fleet and they need to perform, and that's the point when they decide they break. So boot camp's hard for that reason. Even though I've only been in um, boot camp for a week and some change, I can see things turning, and I, I see goals that I can set for myself. It makes me a lot more sure of the decision that I made. I knew deep down inside I really, really, really wanted to be in the service. So it made me a lot more sure and a lot more confident that this was the best decision that I could have made for myself. And it is. Whenever I was back at home, I used to judge myself a lot. I used to think, I'm not doing this right. What am I doing wrong in my life? And I don't have that feeling anymore. I always, I'm satisfied with what I'm going to. I'm really satisfied. Yesterday was our first day wearing the actual uniform. So when we got them and I see that my name is on my right, Give me a second. I'm just like emotional because I'm just remembering the first time I got my uniform with my name on it and I put it on. I'm doing exactly what she did. You're going to look down at your name. And it says U.S. Navy on the left. I'm just like, wow. I got all freaking teary eyed. I was like, man, I can't believe this is like happening. But just because you have it doesn't mean you've earned it. You're going to earn it. Oh, like I get to wear this uniform. This is so cool. It's, it's mind blowing and it's like, wow, my name is on here and it says U.S. Navy. Like, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. It's happening. I'm so excited for graduation. I'm just, I'm ready for it and I'm excited for my family to see me in my uniform. Girl, I swear, you better stop. Oh, good. Woo. Every time we would go to the drill hall ceremony, we would march. We would practice for graduation and they would call eyes right as we're marching and we would snap and we would look at the empty bleachers I, every single time i would just picture my family there just like smiling and waving and crying and i would sit there and tear up every time we did eyes right i'm tearing up right now i would just put a video and for me to just get out of here i mean that's that's my number one inspiration to get through this is seeing how my parents are going to react to it how they're going to feel how are they gonna see what I changed? It's making them proud. 
can't wait for graduation for one reason. And, and, and I feel like it's, it's too long, it's so long away, but it's just knowing that I will make them proud. This is Chicago. That's the barracks there. Those are brothers. Well, that's it for the video, guys. I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys liked the video, make sure you drop a like. Also, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. I love talking to you guys. I talk to you guys pretty much all the time. If you guys are new to the channel, please take a quick second. Check out all the other awesome and helpful content I have for you guys out there that I've uploaded. It uh, means a lot. If you guys like what you see, please consider subscribing. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to work forward. I'm still working on production of a travel vlog and things like that. I'm working on Florida, Disney, California. Uh, some other places like Hawaii, some other stuff I got going on. So I'm still working on my, my drone and my GoPro and some other recording equipment. If you guys would like to help support me with my goal of getting those, you can always check out my Patreon. The link to that is in the description below. Also, if you guys have a quick second, why wouldn't you? We're on lockdown. Uh, do me a huge favor. Go check out my amazing sponsor, Into the AM. They're having a huge sale on their entire website. Everything is 25 to 80% off. So go check out some of the amazing designs and graphics that they create and put on their clothing and things like that. It's just really awesome. Uh, they have something for just about everybody. Guys, girls, they have accessories, backpacks, shoes, all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. So go check them out. They probably have something for you. Also use my affiliate code, Pereira. The link to everything is in the description below. Save yourself an additional 10%. And by doing so, using my affiliate link, you also directly support my YouTube channel. So it helps me out as well. So that's another way of supporting me. But yeah, take advantage of that sale. You can get up to 90% off with my affiliate code. That's insane. So take advantage of that while it lasts. But that's it for the video, you guys. Love y'all, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. The division as a whole is just starting to work together a lot better. Division 229, all present are accounted for, sir. Very well. Very well. <laughs> the standard is set, and they have to do what they can.